Gibbert. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Judd's Hockey Show. We are going back to the old school one-timer. This is going to be oh. short and sweet. Zolgad and Declan Goff. Reckless speculation about to abound, but it comes from a good source. It comes from a place of, of real Real reckless speculation, but a man who is very plugged in. When Elliot Friedman tweets, we jump on the hockey show. We do. When it involves the Minnesota Wild, and let me, Declan Goff, read you the tweet from Elliot Friedman. Frege HNIC, Hockey Night in Canada, best show on TV. Great hair. Take your, take your Netflix uh, shows and screw them because great hair. Hockey Night in Canada is the, the best show going. All right. Yes. Great hair. Great beard in this shot of him as well. Anyway. Um, Friedman's tweet this morning, couple of notes to keep an eye on. Sounds like things are intensifying on the Kevin Fiala front. The Love other is the Boston Bruins yeah, head coaching job. We don't care about that. Although we I, I did hear Scott Sandlin uh, was interviewing for that. Oh, team. really? Yeah. I've heard David you, Quinn's they, name. They, I've they, heard they, some they Pittsburgh them. assistants. Anyway, very interesting. But um, Kevin Fiala, things are intensifying on that front. As I think the expectation is fully among everybody, Declan Goff, that Kevin Fiala is going to be traded in part because, or in large part, because the Wild wants to maximize the return for him before he becomes an unrestricted free agent after next season. He is going to be a restricted free agent, which with their salary cap problems presents problems within itself if he gets an offer sheet. So Kevin Fiala potentially could be traded sooner rather than later and Declan I want to run this thought past you because it was the first thought that occurred to me when I saw this news because the the actual trade itself won't be shocking but you know on last week's episode we went through an entire list of all of the forwards centers and wingers who are now out there Mm -hmm. and I said you know and I think that you had said this previously and you agreed completely this is going to make it tougher to make a trade because now you know Alex DeBrinkett who is probably more desirable than Fiala's out there there's just a lot of talent uh perhaps David Pasternak I wonder if Bill Guerin, in his wisdom, infinite wisdom, is saying, you know what, bleep it. I'm going to jump the market, and I'm going to shop this guy aggressively right now and say, do you want to take a chance that you're going to get to brink it, but you might not? Because I am taking offers right now. I am at my at my Amazon location. <laughs> I am willing to move a Fiala to your front doorstep immediately. What do you think of that? potentially being the wilds play and trying to get ahead of this game of a lot of guys flooding the market and saying you can get this guy here's what i need back no it doesn't shock me at all that garen would like to potentially set that market you know he he kind of surprised us in left field with the um the laurier trade you know not neither of us really like the nick de laurier and also like what no one really saw that coming i would even say judd um the nico Sturm for tyson yost trade kind of came out of left field too um, so he's done it before, you know, he, he, he has kind of jumped the gun now, now he got flower on deadline day and, and that one was just more of a wait and see. And it was more of, I think it was out of the wilds control and it was more in flowers control. And then he eventually waves it. He comes here, blah, blah, blah. But Garen has done this before. I mean, look, even on draft night, uh, the draft in 2020, that weird draft where we were still getting things going, right? He traded Luke Cunning for, for Nick Benino and a second round pick, right? Like, so he has kind of set his own market before. So I'm not surprised if he is indeed seeing these Fiala trade rumors. They're quote unquote intensifying from Elliot Friedman. Um, so I'm not too surprised by that. So, and, and it sounds like, and I, I just sent you a text. We're, we're doing this on the fly. We're recording this at 1240. Oh, I there could be a there. very good chance on the fly. Jamie Hirsch going to sue Jamie you. Hirsch? Yeah, Jamie might. I like Jamie. I don't think she's going to sue me. We, we, we're friends. Um, I, I I wonder how much how fluid and how quickly this is going to move because he was on uh, the Jeff Marak show I believe and, and that's a Jeff Sportsnet Merrick. show uh, um, in yeah in, uh, in 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 Toronto so a, a big wig station there and Friedman was on there this afternoon on Wednesday and again we're recording this at twelve fifty so again very good chance you could be listening and consuming this and Fiala is indeed already traded but he said Friedman did there's definitely been a lot of talk uh, pertaining to uh, Kevin Fiala trade rumors he mentions New Jersey. Los Angeles, that's a new one, Ottawa, and potentially Buffalo as the teams who make the most sense in terms of movable assets. Not necessarily teams that have expressed interest, but movable assets. I keep seeing Buffalo. And I'm going to throw, as I'll throw a name at you, and this is a name I actually want nothing to do with in a return. Okay. I'm curious your thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. Does 
bringing back Casey Middlestead do anything for you in a Kevin Fiala trade? Not really. Um, he's been around for a while now, and I don't know. Here, so, so here's the problem. The problem is the Sabres, and I think this is changing now with um, Don Granato as coach there, but their infrastructure has been so horse bleep for so long that I can't decide if they have just flat out ruined some guys or if they're redeemable, right? Yeah. Middlestead, I mean, as part of a return, I guess I could hear that, but I would need a lot. I, I would need more than that, clearly, and it would have to be a, a lot more. This is an interesting list because let's go through it here, Dex. Yep. Um, uh, b- because, yes, it's returnable, movable assets, but let's go through because, as we've discussed in depth, Kevin Fiala almost certainly is going to have to agree to a contract extension with the team that gets him. Like, you're not yeah. going to trade for one year of Kevin and then have him bolt. Ottawa, to me, becomes more of a a long shot. Arena problems, they're, you know, going to Canada presents some problems for some, especially to that team. Ownership problems. Um, I don't know that the Senators, I don't know that Kevin is going to say, sign me up for six or seven years here. So I would almost eliminate them as a potential. Buffalo does have a little bit more of a, I think, juice now than they did certainly a year or two back when they were an absolute disaster. I think Buffalo's building something. Um, Is Kevin Fiala going to want to be there long term? That's question mark. I mean, it is Buffalo. New Jersey is intriguing. Los Angeles is. And I think the question is, the Kings have a ton of capital. Like they have, oh my God. This is the one I like the most, I think. Yes. So the wild side. Yeah, I agree. And I think Fiala would sign long-term in Los Angeles in a heartbeat. Like, I don't see a way he's going to say, the Los Angeles Kings, no way. So I think this one is really, really intriguing as far as immediate returnable assets, not necessarily draft picks, because the Devils are probably more, what's it going to take to get your second overall pick, which they're very open to moving, but it's going to cost a lot. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the kings of all the teams we're going through right now might make the most sense. Let, let's go down that path a little bit here, too, because the kings right now have 19 million in cap space. So they they have space to make this happen. Um, you know, Anzi Kopitar has two years left at 10 million per. He's, he's still solid, but he's obviously up there in age. Um, but their prospect pool is good. I You know... Alex Turcotte was a, was a first-round pick by them, I think, two drafts ago. He could be someone on the move. I don't know if they'd be willing to part with this player, but I love this player. Alex Iafalo at UM, who oh. was a, also another former UMD Bulldog. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if if the Kings be willing to swap Iafalo for Fiala, because Iafalo is really kind of blossoming into a really solid player for them. And Iafalo is under contract for $4 million per through 2025, so a pretty reasonable figure, too. I personally really like his game. You know, Quentin Byfield, obviously off limits. They're not going to move Quentin Byfield for, right. for Kevin Fiala. Right. Um, but they have some interesting prospects here that I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Wild could potentially pry away. I don't know if if they could land at Aya Falo, who is a probably he's up he's, he's older than Fiala. He's twenty eight years old, but he's a he's a solid forward. And I think What's the Kings contract? he's What's under his contract. Decks? Yep, he, he makes four million per for the next three seasons, including this one. So very reasonable, very reasonable deal. I would I would keep an eye out in the recklessly speculating, of course. I I would keep an eye out in the, as the Kings as potentially the favorite to make this happen. And I think if you do a deal, I believe in in my in my um just reckless spe- speculation guesstimating. I think a deal for Fiala is going to get you back draft picks and young talent. So I I don't think the Kings are going to trade a contributing veteran player, and I don't know that Bill Guerin's going to want one. Mm-hmm. So I so just my guess is the Kings are. A very intriguing from the standpoint of prospects who are coming up who and they have uh be, because you know they've been bad for a while now they've certainly got some prospects built up in that pool that makes sense the devils i don't know if you get the second pick the senators pick wise makes sense i just don't see kevin fiala agreeing to sign there long term buffalo yeah. intrigues me but again i don't know uh, the interesting thing here is like threefold right one the trade's going to have to be with a team you would almost certainly think that has an assurance from Kevin that he's going to sign there. So it's not going to be a team that's, hey, we got one year of Kevin and we're trading you a really good prospect, a really good draft pick, and now Fiala's going to walk. So that's the first thing. 
The second thing is the market itself. And and I am just spitballing here that Bill Guerin wisely is trying to get in front of the market. Because, you know, we don't know if Debrinkit's going to be moved. His name's just out there. Um, Pasternak, who would get you a ton back if you're oh, yeah. Boston. But we don't know that. Like, he very well might not be dealt. So I just, I wonder if Bill is trying to get ahead of the market right now and say, you can have, I, I mean, this guy's going to score a ton, a ton of goals coming off a great year. You can have him right now. Here's the price. But then the third thing is teams might slow or the teams that are talking uh, to Bill Guerin about a Fiala trade might slow cook it themselves. So like there is a ton of intrigue around here, but I think the Friedman thing is out there because the wild is smart enough to say, we are not going to get stuck in this whole thing of now Pasternak's being shopped and Debrinket's right and Fiala and then you know what the uh, free agency period starts in around July 14th or so. So that's just my guess. But I'm with you. I think the Kings intrigue me. I think the Devils intrigue me uh, as realistic possibilities among teams that have assets to trade and can use a guy like Fiala playing wing for them. One more name on the Kings to throw out here. Reckless speculation. That you could potentially um, maybe get back is 24-year-old uh, Blake Lazat, mm. who also is a solid mm. center, uh, former mm. St. Cloud State Husky too, uh, but had 24 points, 10 goals last season. Um, analytically, he's pretty solid. He, he's not flashy offensively, but he's solid defensively. Um, and there might be something more to his game playing outside of a fourth line role that he was doing mostly in Los Angeles. Another okay. name just to keep in mind. Another name right. to keep in mind if, if you're a Wild fan and you're trying to uh, personify trades with the uh, Kings and the Wild. But yeah, this will be interesting. Oh, that's great that, stuff. Intensifying. As, oh, uh, God, as, intensifying. As and, and, and this is just the start. We got the draft, what, next week? Yeah. Um, Next, I believe it's Thursday, Friday in Montreal free agency after that so like the the intensification of the entire process is just starting and judd's hockey show will be here for you every step of the way this was a one-timer on the availability and the potential trade of kevin fiala i'm judd he's declan declan you know there's no room for petty bull pass shoot score